Hi everyone. <laughs> Today we have a double upload because I don't think I've been as consistent on YouTube as I have wanted to when it comes to videos. I have been posting every single day but it has not been videos and even my vlog yesterday which you know was an importance of vlog since it's my 17th birthday vlog was i think 18 minutes which is still like a good amount of time for a video but i had a goal of making this 25 minutes per video i'm gonna change the angle real quick <laughs> like i was saying i have a goal of making 25 minute videos not 18 minute videos 15 minute videos 10 minute videos so i'll try to you know keep up my word now the clip that you saw in the beginning is not a hallucination yes guys i did submit my application for my charity partnership for the 2024 nyc marathon hopefully they'll get back to me and say that i have been accepted and i will make a video in the future kind of giving you guys the whole rundown of our fundraising goal and the charity i chose and a bunch of other fun stuff so if you have plans of going to the new york marathon this year but you just don't know how i uh will make a video in the future if you guys want to see that if you are interested in a video about the whole process of partnering with a charity to go and qualify for the new york marathon then put it down below in the comments i would love to hear you guys feedback feedback about that but yes you read the title correctly today we are kind of going over my tips and tricks first starting off with essentials and then going to tips and tricks later so i have five essentials for you guys i'm a new runner so just take everything that i say in this video with a grain of salt okay yesterday actually not yesterday because it's the 29th it's a leap day guys <laughs> it's a leap day um the 27th which is my birthday that also happened to be my one year running anniversary exactly one year from my birthday was when i had my first track practice so obviously a more experienced runner could probably give you a more in-depth understanding of each one of these points but from my beginner perspective this is my advice Firstly, we have running glasses. This particular pair of running glasses did not come with this little, uh, I don't even know what to call this, a little drawstring bag. I just had it laying around conveniently because I don't want to get my, gla my new glasses all scratched up. These are my glasses. I don't know if they're just regular cool looking sunglasses or if they're actually technically real running glasses, but I feel like the distinction between running glasses and regular sunglasses, obviously a bunch of things like UV ray absorption or whatever, you know, I don't know the scientific technical terms for it, but I know specifically I was looking for a pair of sunglasses that connect in the middle, so that definitely check right there. So I just got these running glasses. It is kind of a little gloomy where I live. It's still kind of cold out here too. So this is definitely going to help me during the summer when it's sunny and I don't want to be blinded by the blinding light of the sun. I remember during track season last year, because I was a sprinter, I would be sprinting trying to get go as fast as I can down this track and the the sun would get in my eye and i would be literally blind for a few seconds um and it was very disorienting and distracting me from getting my prs which <laughs> i know that sounds like an excuse and it definitely is <laughs> i always see professional runners wearing sun uh wearing running glasses so i think that this is not only cute but it, it's also very functional specifically my running glasses they have little cushions i don't know if you can see that but they have little nose cushions which is a lot more comfortable um for longer runs 
What is the point of having, you know, running glasses if they're all dirty? So I have this cleaning kit that I use on my glasses uh, very frequently so that I don't have any field of view issues. It's just, you know, regular uh, cleaning solution and then uh, a little specifically for glasses, like running um, or a uh, cleaning rag. I don't know, even really know what to call this, but it's, it's a little wipe or whatever for it. The number two most important is e running essential for me is a squeeze bottle. Now specifically this Gatorade bottle I'm using currently, I found this kind of shoved behind a bunch of water bottles at Five Below and it was the last one in stock so all the stars aligned for me to get this particular water bottle. I used to use a thermos and obviously uh, that's not very ideal when you're kind of already low on energy from running or even playing basketball. Um, you don't want to have to twist open a thing or pop open a, a lid or something to in order to you know pour it into your mouth no <laughs> with a squeeze bottle all you got to do is literally just you know it's called squeeze bottle for a reason you just you know squeeze it now in the future though i do think that i'm going to change out my water bottle for one of those collapsible water bottles i'll, I'll maybe add a picture um on the screen of what i'm talking about but when I see people have their fancy running vest or whatever, they'll usually have one of those collapsible bottles, which makes me feel like maybe that's the next evolution in my water bottle journey. Definitely, if I am on this water bottle journey, this is definitely stage two, and it's way better than the water bottle situation I had, you know, in the past. Numero tres. <laughs> okay yeah i'm butchering that a little bit oh i am losing the light right now guys it is it is kind of getting a little late i have this watch i've went through two watches already including this one the other one kind of unexpectedly unexpectedly randomly just died on me for no reason and so i had to get another watch um and this one is actually i kind of feel is better because i can act i can i don't know if you guys can, okay let me let me just show you guys this band on the watch is replaceable and that's great the second feature on this watch is the protector on the screen which kind of gives it a sleeker look and protects you know the actual screen itself you do not need a watch okay but i need a watch <laughs> because i run based off of time and if i use my phone uh then it would just be so much more complicated when something's wrapped around your wrist, all I have to do is to check. All I have to do to check the time is just literally to flip my wrist over, look at it, and then flip it back over. It's just the easiest process ever. And having a watch uncomplicates my running so much. I have had runs where I did actually use my phone. Um, I had it in my pocket of my sweatpants because I was running in the cold and while I was running literally every step I felt the phone dragging against my skin and it was really distracting. So watch number tres. Don't need a watch um, but it is very very helpful if you do have the means for one. Number four is possibly the most important essential on this list and it is a good pair of shoes these shoes are under armor i got them from the thrift store if you guys get your shoes from thrift stores or third hand companies businesses whatever then make sure that they're brand new or look like they haven't been used because shoes at least running shoes are like cars you want to look for a pair of running shoes that have low mileage because every time that you step your shoes are taking the absorption of every step hopefully you're not running like this you get what i'm talking about they're definitely an investment because a lot of really good quality shoes are kind of expensive but you're paying for the price of the shoe or you're paying for the price of you know shin splints injuries just a, a whole slew of things that you can prevent now, my experience with bad shoes, 
I did a whole season of track last year and and I wore these shoes the entire time. These, uh, I don't know what, what specific line of Adidas this, these are, but these are, you know, women's eight Adidas shoes, just regular running shoes. Yeah, I can attest from experience that these definitely gave me a lot of uh, extra problems with recovery issues and shin splints and all of these things that I could prevent. And it's because they have they have no cushion. The the shoe is shaped weird, so it doesn't allow you know for maximum movement. It's a it's an all right running shoe, but I really just suggest that you get a more open toed almost you know shoe. Can you see the difference? This one, this one. I don't know. I feel like these are just way better. But I do plan on getting more running shoes in the in the future. Coming in at number five of my top five running essentials is a good pair of headphones. Now I am fortunate enough to own a pair of JBLs. I do not wear headphones on my runs usually at all because <laughs> I started my running journey off with David Goggins, and that's kind of one one of his top things that he kind of avoids doing during his runs and I can understand why because I like to be in the moment I like to kind of focus on my run um so I can perfect form music for me personally kind of distracts me from the task at hand but on occasion I will put headphones on because these are Bluetooth headphones if you were to tune into what I'm listening to on those days that I do wear headphones usually a podcast or maybe some non-lyrical music I have listened to music in the past hype music and it was so hype that my pace was all off. I was going way too fast. I was breathing way too fast. Everything was just off. And I kind of suffered for the rest of that run because of that. Okay, I paid for listening to some energetic music that day. So I don't really like to listen to lyrical music because it kind of messes with my run a little bit. Let's talk about the debate between ear Bluetooth earbuds and Bluetooth headphones. I own, you know, a pair of Bluetooth headphones, obviously, but I've never tried out earbuds. I have heard from other people that when you're sweating, it's going to go down your head and headphones uh, on long runs, at least, maybe that's a con for some people. But the pro for headphones is that when you put them on, it blocks everything out. I don't think you can get that same effect with earbuds. To use Bluetooth anything with caution and safety, music at low volume, or put you know one one muff on, one muff off, because you want to be aware of your environment and make sure that you know you're safe. And now we come to the tips part of the video like i said at the beginning of the video i am a beginner so this is the a beginner perspective these things might change as i keep on my journey but for right now this is what's kind of helping me number one is run slow now i know what you're thinking if you if i run slow then it's gonna take so much longer to get to my my goal pace or my goal mileage no it's not and there's actually research that's come out that says that if you want to run s faster then you have to run slower i'm not a scientist and uh i'll leave down some articles uh, in the description of what uh research uh and scientists are saying about this new concept of running slower to run faster but running slow just makes sense overall without that particular part of it first of all it makes you like running more i mean if every single run you are pushing yourself and you're literally dead by the end of it limping everywhere you go because you're so sore by the end of every single workout then you're gonna be you're you're you're, you're gonna work up some nerves about putting on those running shoes every single morning because it's gonna feel <laughs> like scary and intimidating 
but if you're kind of going at your own pace and you do easy runs most of the time then you're gonna be more likely to fall in love with running and you are going to also be more likely to be consistent which is actually the key to becoming a better runner is consistency like you need consistency in order to build up the endurance so that's really the important thing if you have like 25 easy runs in a month and you run every single day but then you have like maybe five zone three days i feel like that is better than having two going all out sprinting days in a month and then doing nothing for the rest of the month and secondly when you run slower you can focus on your form more usually when we're you know running fast we're just focused on running as fast as we can and we don't really spot those inadequacies but if you run slower then it is easier to spot and to add on to that you do not want to hurt yourself okay you will hurt yourself if you go too fast too quickly so just pace yourself okay be kind to yourself love the process of doing this and you're you'll be good the second tip that i have for you guys is stretch before and after your run i know you've probably heard this before from you know other runners from maybe even your coaches and you kind of roll your eyes and say oh my god not this again but it's true guys i if i compared the runs that i had in the past where i didn't stretch before or after to the runs that I at least stretched before or at least stretched after at the very least I can definitely see a clear difference between the two of them because when I do stretch I come out of it fresh and I can you know spend more time working out because i'm not super sore all the time even if you have a hard workout you do not have to be unnecessarily sore all the time the reason why you might be is because you're not stretching right what i like to do is dynamic stretching before my runs and then after my runs static stretching dynamic stretching is kind of like when you are putting your body in motion but it's still stretching for example if you guys watched my 17th birthday vlog my previous video go check that out actually uh, after this video you would clearly see me doing that you know back and forth swinging thing on the tree <laughs> that's a dynamic stretch and it kind of is there to just warm up your muscles and get some blood flowing before you actually start the workout. Afterwards, static stretching, you all know what static stretching is. Um, we're doing child's pose, we're doing cat cow, we're doing all of those, you know, poses that you would probably hold for 10 seconds or so. Stretching kind of goes into the big bucket of, of the conversation around recovery. So I'll tell you guys a few more other things that you can do for quick recovery if uh, stretching is just not enough. There's ice baths, there's more protein right after your workouts. There's foam rollers. Oh my god, I love myself a good foam roll. <laughs> light walking or light exercise. You may think that, you know, any exercise after you have did a, a good workout is detrimental and might cause more harm than good but a little light something actually can help with recovery and actually can help with loosening those muscles up number three on my list of tips is dress right for the weather i had a december 5k a few months ago and when i was training for that 5k i had you know my outfit consisted of a tank top underneath a jacket and then shorts underneath some sweats now the reason why i didn't just go out there with a jacket and um, some sweats is because i knew that what when you're running you know you start overheating and then you're going to want to take off layers and you need to pack and prepare for every situation when it comes to running 
So yeah, cold weather, make sure you wear a tank or something or a tank and shorts underneath your sweats and your jacket. Warm weather, I still wear a jacket because I don't know how the weather is going to change. It might start raining in the middle of my run and I'm going to be so glad that I gave myself uh, the right gear to handle the rain. And another thing about uh, rainy days, so I will still go out and train on days that it's raining, but I will tweak my workout because I don't want to hurt myself. So let's just say I wanted to kind of do a zone three uh, sprints or something during that workout, I'd, pr I'd probably just go for an easy run that day because you know, slick, wet roads don't really agree with uh, fast running. And you want to make sure that you just dress right for the conditions. Number four is correct form. Um, I am not an expert on correct form, so I do not have all the answers on exactly what correct form you need to be wearing, right? But I know specifically for me, I had a very big problem on being too tense uh, every single time I ran. My shoulders were up, my hands were balled into fists, and um, everything was just so tense. And that's extra energy that you're using uh, that's unnecessary. You want to be using all your energy toward moving forward. And another tip for this particular bullet point is that you should kind of, or this is at least for me, so maybe just use this um, if it resonates, if it doesn't, just leave it. But you want to kind of let your legs take you and don't really worry about your upper body. Obviously, you don't want to be too tense in your hands, so use the, um, I saw this thing about uh, kind of drum, uh, hammer on the drum, so it shouldn't be like you know loose hands and hammer on the drum but you shouldn't really be focusing too much on your upper body kind of just let your legs take you and i have seen a drastic change in the way that i run using this particular new running form If you're sprinting, try to be... If you're sprinting, try to be as diagonal as possible. I, When I was on track, I was a sprinter, and I would look back at videos uh, that of me sprinting, and I was like all the way back here like a cartoon character. So you want to make sure that you're kind of hunched forward, but not so much that you're kind of falling, but it, it should be, you know, a nice even line, you know, diagonal. Yeah, this is vertical, horizontal, so you want to be diagonal. And finally, the fifth one and the last one because uh, it's kind of getting a little cold out here. So I'm going to just try to wrap this video up. But basically, uh, you when you were when you're running, what what do you think about? Well, what I like to think about is about is food. Uh, I will you frequently think about food or what I am going to do after I get back home. I don't really like to think about how the run is going itself uh, when I am running. If I think about it too much, then I will start to get in my head about uh, if I'm going to make it. And that's just a whole ordeal in itself. So I'll usually try to preoccupy my mind with something. And a lot of people, that's why they wear headphones. They need something to preoccupy their mind because... Uh, because they get bored during your run. But I know me personally, I don't get bored during runs, okay? I am very in tune and connected in the moment. I am just never bored. So I don't know what you guys are doing. 
<laughs> but I never get bored. Um, so I don't really usually need headphones. And that concludes the end of today's video. If you liked the video, like the video. Comment down below if uh, you resonated with anything I said in today's video. The tips, the tricks, the essentials, whatever, so on. Here are my socials on the screen. We have Pinterest, Goodreads, and Wattpad. Pinterest, I will be posting three times a week, minimum, Goodreads. I'll inform you guys of the book I am reading this week. If you want to know that information, then go on and head over to Goodreads because I update you guys on that weekly and I also have you know some good reviews that you can um peruse and then Wattpad I'll be publishing all of the previews for the short stories stories books whatever I'm writing currently that's what will be on Wattpad I hope you have an amazing morning afternoon or night where whenever you're watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>